Good morning. Welcome to Zion Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Steve. Welcome to those who are listening on the radio and those who are watching online. Welcome to those who are visiting today. What a blessing it is to have all of us be able to worship God together, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in his house. Oh, there's a number of announcements this morning. First one I want to point out, if you look at the screen, there's a bunch of dots on there. Uh, you'll see it a lot more when there's like the words on there there's something wrong with the projector so it's it, not you it's the screen the projector so just uh, know that we're in the process of getting that repaired so it might be a week or two before they can finally get in here so if you see those dots it's not your eyes they're really on the screen um, we had the pictorial directory photos taken this last week we've got this coming Friday and Saturday as well to sign up if you weren't able to, to make the, the pictures this last week. So please sign up for that. Today is the first day of Sunday school and adult Bible classes. Um, yay! Um, found out that we have 45 kids registered for Sunday school, which is a huge number compared to what we've had in the past. So what an awesome thing that is. And because we have so many kids, we are still looking for some more adult assistance. So if you are able to help out, um, please talk to Tracy, and she will uh, help get you signed up for that. Um, in a couple weeks, on Sunday, September 29th, we will be having the 24th annual Polka Worship Service during our worship time that morning. And then following that, we will have a potluck, so please prepare to uh, bring some goodies to share after that, and they will move from being in here over into the gathering room, and we will use that space and to eat and to, to uh, just have fun and fellowship together at that point in time. Um, this Wednesday, we will start our Wednesday morning Bible classes. Bible class starts at 1030, but if you want to get there around 10 or so to, to gab and get all caught up from the summer and all the things that you've missed, um, show up about 10 o'clock and we'll start class at 1030. National Youth Gathering is coming up for the, the, this year's 8th graders through 12th graders. If you are interested in doing that, registration deadline is October 6th. Um, if you want more information about that, please talk to me, and we'll get you squared away for that. Also, if you noticed when you came in, the youth are selling greeting cards as part of their fundraising for this coming gathering. So if you're interested in purchasing greeting cards, check them out. They've got a number of different opportunities for that. I believe those are all of the announcements. Whew. Good, because we didn't come here for that. We came here to worship and praise God. So let us begin our time of worship this morning as we sing our opening hymn, Rise, Shine, You Peoples.
Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be strong and let your heart take courage. All who wait for the Lord. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemy and from my persecutors. strong and let your heart take courage all you who wait for the Lord in peace let us pray to the Lord For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, our support and defense in every need, continue to preserve your church in safety. Govern her by goodness, by your goodness, and bless her with your peace. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading comes from Isaiah 50, verses 4 through 10. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. But the Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Behold, all of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? Let him who walks in darkness and has no light trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from James 3, verses 1 through 12. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For we all stumble in many ways, and if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. If we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand out of respect to the reading of the Holy Gospel as we sing together the Alleluia and verse. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. When they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them and scribes arguing with them. 
And immediately all the crowd, when they saw him, were greatly amazed and ran up to Jesus and greeted him. And he asked them, what are you arguing about with them? And some one from the crowd answered him, Teacher, I brought my son to you, for he has a spirit that makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast it out, and they were not able. And he answered them, O faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. And when the spirit saw him, immediately it convulsed the boy, and he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And it has often cast him into the fire and into water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can, all things are possible for one who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that the crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. And after crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out, and the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had entered the house, the disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, This kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Please be seated as we sing our sermon hymn, Your Hand, O Lord, in Days of Old.
Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Oh, how mighty is the tongue, right? With it, you can lick an envelope and then send it in the mail. What a wonderful thing your tongue is. With it, you can taste sweet and salty and savory. With your tongue, you can go like this. Blah, 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 blah. You can. I don't encourage you to do it, I guess unless you really want to. Your tongue, it is such a small little muscle sitting there right in the middle of your mouth, has lots of little jobs to do. But what it does the most is it talks. At least the thing that becomes the most that anybody else notices is it makes sounds and you use those sounds to make speech. And with that speech, you can do amazing things. You can sing a lullaby to a baby. You can calm a child as they are hurting when they fall off the swing. You can share love to somebody simply by whispering, I love you, in their ear. Oh, the tongue, so powerful, so mighty. It can say quiet little words or loud, boisterous words or mean words. As James was writing, he says this, So the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. Previously, he said that it was very difficult for us to control our tongue. You think about it, when a child is really, really small and all they do is make noises, as, as parents, the thing you really want them to do is say, Mommy or Dad, and then to say other words, and you get excited. It's so much fun watching a child learn to speak. Oh, so fun. And then about two years later, when it is why, 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 or no, 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 or mine, 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 you think to yourself, why did I teach them to speak? Oh, they used to be just cute, and they babbled, and it was fine, but now... They say things. Unfortunately, sometimes you walk into a store and you hear a small child using language that some sailors would be embarrassed by. Our tongues. They are a gift to us from God to be used for His glory, to praise His name. But unfortunately, we... We are sinners. And although sometimes we do really good things with our tongues and say really nice things, we also do the opposite. And usually when we do the opposite, when we say those things that we shouldn't say, it usually isn't just a little bit, right? Because then... When you hear somebody say something to you, you have the tendency to take it to heart. You have a tendency to start thinking, oh, that person doesn't like me. That person's mean. That person's rude. That person, oh, that person. All because of words. All because of our tongues not being controlled. How good are you at controlling your tongue? How quick is your tongue to speak out instead of being still and 
listening and being thoughtful. How quick is your tongue to say things that might not be beneficial instead of waiting and saying something in a different way, a different tone of voice. How well are you at keeping your tongue? If you're like me, you're awesome at it when you're sleeping. There are times that my mouth, my tongue says things that are mean and hurtful. I fall short of God's perfect glory in his love, and I say things I shouldn't. So if I have offended you with my tongue, forgive me. If I have offended you or said something that's hurt you, point it out to me in love so that I can ask for your forgiveness. Our tongues are so powerful and yet so small compared to the rest of us. Something else that is so powerful that is often done while using our tongue is prayer. Right? Together we have already vocalized a few prayers together this morning. We've used our tongues to praise God in songs Our tongues have been used in wonderful ways today. And it seems like such a small thing to do, pray. But in our gospel reading for today, right after Jesus and three of his disciples were up on the Mount of Transfiguration, they come down to the rest of the disciples, and there is a scene A whole bunch of people arguing about stuff. And Jesus comes in to the group and asks, what are you arguing about? And a man says, I brought my son to your disciples because he has got a demon that that makes him mute and makes him foam and makes him rigid and sometimes throws him into the fire and sometimes throws him into the water to try and kill him. And I asked your disciples to cast it out, but they couldn't. And so after Jesus has a conversation with the man, he casts out the demon. The disciples later asked him, why couldn't we do it? We, we did all the things you told us to. We, we did all of the stuff. And Jesus simply said, this kind can only come out by prayer. How powerful must prayer be if that is the only way to cast out that type of demon, Jesus says. How powerful is our prayers that we bring before the Lord? How powerful? How often do we pray for people? I mean, we do it here every Sunday morning. We've got a list. We go through the list. We pray for them. Sometimes we pray for them when we know them personally and we might, but How much of our life is really spent in an opportunity of prayer? An opportunity to have conversation with the God who created the universe, who asks us, encourages us, invites us to have conversation with him. If you don't spend time in prayer, I encourage you, find time. Better yet, don't find time. Make time. Why? Because if there is power enough to cast out demons in prayer, 
we need that power, right? We need to have that connection to God through simple prayer. For what purpose? Is it just to cast out demons? No. In confirmation, we talk about ACTS, A-C-T-S, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. Ways of praying. Adoration, simply saying, God, you are amazing. God, how gracious and wonderful and loving and kind you are, Lord. I look at the beauty of the world around me and I see your grace and your beauty, Lord. You are amazing. You are a God of love. Adoration. Confession. Lord, how much time do you have? Because my confessions are going to take a while. And I know you've got a whole lot of other people, Lord, but whew, here's my list. Lord, I'm sorry. I used my tongue for evil. I, I said things. I thought things, and I did things, Lord, and, and you know those things. And, Lord, I'm, I'm sorry. Help me, Lord, to, to be better. Help me, Lord, to follow you closer. Help me, Lord, because by myself I have no strength. Help me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord, for the things that I have done. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this wonderful congregation. Thank you for the beautiful stained glass windows that every Sunday we have an opportunity to look and see Scripture lived out in the beautiful artwork that others have done. Lord, thank you for my family. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for my home, for my everything, Lord. Thank you for my life. Thank you that you promise to be with me even when I don't remember you're there. Thank you, Lord. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication, praying for others. Lord, you know the list, but I want to bring the list before you again. Be with David and Emily and Lydia and John and Megan and Liz, my family. Be with my parents and Liz's parents, Lord. You know what's going on in their lives. Be with my siblings and their families, Lord. And, and be with the Klukas family and be with the Johnsons and be with the Jacksons and be with... Lord, you know what's going on. And Lord, here are my specific prayers of people that I know who are in need of your grace right now. Lord, we lift up Tessie to you. Lord, we lift up so many to you. Lord, you know what they need. We pray that you would touch them with your healing hands just as Jesus touched the young man who was demon-possessed. Lord, help us. Help us, Lord, to be in prayer for others. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication. When do we use that? Sunday mornings? Right before bed? Yeah, those are good times to do it. When we eat, we pray before our meals often? Great, that is a wonderful thing. How about when we're driving? How about when we're riding the school bus? How about when we're walking with friends? How about when we're sitting and watching another YouTube video or a Netflix series or... Yeah. In all of those times, to bring whatever comes into our heart and mind to the Lord and say, Lord, thank you for this. Help me with this. Forgive me for that, Lord. In all things... Help me to find my strength not in myself, 
especially as I get older, Lord, I know I am not the epitome of health and strength and might. In fact, I am the opposite of the epitome of health and strength and might. I look at a staircase and I go, 13. I can do 13 steps. I can get up there. I used to run up the stairs when I was younger, sometimes skipping a step. My strength is waning, but God's strength, God's power, God's might is not. It is complete. It is eternal. He is always powerful, always mighty, always strong, and he always wants us to to trust him for that strength in our lives. May God fill us with the desire to use our tongue for his good. Give us the strength to use our tongue to bring our prayers, our acts, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplications to the Lord all day long. Because through his might, our lives are his. Please pray with me. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you know all things. There is nothing that is hidden from you. None of the bad that we do, nor all of the good that we do as well. Lord, you see it all. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to suffer and die and rise again so that our sins are forgiven. Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to come to you all day long to have the thought of your love and grace in our hearts all day long. Teach us to treat others as you would have us treat them in your love and your grace. Forgive us, Lord, when we fall short. Teach us to use our tongues for your glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand as we confess our Christian faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. We confess, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for your love and your grace. Thank you for continuing to pour your mercy upon us. Lord, open our eyes that we would see your mercy each day. Help us, Lord, to find our strength and hope in you alone. Teach us, Lord, to come to you often in prayer. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for Barb, Valletta, Tim, Joanne, Tessie, Steve, Patty, Derek, George, Deanna, Chet, Caleb, Jeanette, Julie, Barb, Beth, and all others, 
that we hold in our hearts that are suffering in this life in body and spirit. Lord, we pray that you would give them the strength and the healing. Lord, if it is your will to bring them back to full health, Lord, in your mercy. We thank you, Lord, that you have allowed us to share life together. We pray that you would be with Annabella, Kevin, Murphy, Jackie, David, Taylor, Tyrone, Tim, Elaine, Dee, and Ivan as they celebrate birthdays this week, and with Jesse and Kaya, Dave and Karen, Tom and Melissa, Marty and Stacy as they celebrate anniversaries. Remind us, Lord, that every breath is a gift from you. Lord, in your mercy. I pray, Lord, for wisdom and strength for President Biden and Governor Walls and all of the elected officials of our nation. We pray that you would keep them safe, that they would be useful for whatever purpose you have placed them in for, to office. We pray for our military men and women around the world and their safety. We pray for our police officers, firefighters, EMSs, all who put themselves in harm's way for the benefits of others. Lord, keep them safe and bless their families as well. Lord, in your mercy. In this dark world in which we live, Lord, in so many places and so many times, depression and anxiety overwhelms people, especially at times of mourning and loss. Well, Lord, we pray that you would bring comfort and strength and peace into the hearts and minds of those who are struggling. Remind them that you are with them to be their strength. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to be with all of the students and their families as they continue this school year. Lord, keep them and their teachers and staff safe and healthy. Lord, uh, as school starts, so does the school flu and colds and all of those things that seem to be passed on to different people. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would, would bring healing to those who are suffering already from those sicknesses that they've picked up from others. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray that you would be with those who are struggling with arthritis or fall allergies or any other of the list of things that ails us, Lord, that you would bring strength and healing in those areas. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we pray for relationships. We pray that as we use our tongue, Lord, that we would use it in a way that is positive and uplifting and encouraging. And when disagreements arise, Lord, that they would be used in a way that would be not hurtful, but strengthening and establishing you know, grace and peace in the relationship. Lord, use our tongues. Help us to let them be led by you. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the suffering and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation, rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead. We draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we'll collect our offerings.
Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross, risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the high. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We sing together our closing hymn, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. <laughs>